name signed already. So if nobody ever believes me, it's okay. God tells you with trust. I think it's uh, Proverbs 3, 3, 4. Help me out. I'm not, uh, if I forget a little bit of scripture, but get the meaning. I'm pretty sure I got it, though. But uh, Proverbs, 3, Proverbs 3, 3, and 4 says, Let not mercy and truth, which is trust, forsake thee. Bind it about thy neck. Write it on the tablets of thy heart, that I might find favor and good understanding in the sight of God, then man. If I'm okay with God, if man don't understand, that's okay. That's okay with me. Because in the sight of God, he said, I have favor and good understanding. And with good understanding comes knowledge and wisdom. Remember Solomon, the richest man in the world? He said, what do you want? He said, give me some of that godly wisdom. Because with godly wisdom, I can get everything else. We need to recognize what God is offering. You know, and we need to be there for each other. And not just with the lip service. And it's not always with money. Jesus. Prayer changes the physical reality. And the invisible or spiritual world creates the physical world. This is why God said we can speak things into existence. Physical reality and the invisible or spiritual world creates the physical world. This is why we can speak things into existence. But you got to believe that. God said if you had faith of a mustard seed, I'm pretty sure everybody here got more faith than a mustard seed. Everybody here got more faith than a mustard seed. And God said if we come together, do you realize that if I start praying, Reverend, Reverend Carter steps up and starts praying. I can call on a thousand angelical angels on my own. When she comes with me, we're talking about 20. Come on now. Minister, come up, we're talking about 40. We get Minister Arden here, we're doubling, we're talking about 80. That's why he tells us, forsake not the assembling of the saints. Because yeah. when we come together, we all pray. Look at all the angels we can call on. Look at the power that we got. Not on our own accord, but through the Holy Spirit. The power of God is in us. And he's sitting back saying, why ain't you using me? That's just like you the coach of the, uh, of the, the Miami Heat. And you got LeBron, Wade, you know, and what's the boss, and you got all these boys on the bench and you the coach. And your team is getting their butt kicked. And they lean over like, send us in, send us in. And you're like, no, nah, they're okay. I'm okay with losing. I ain't okay with losing. If I'm on the bench and my family's under attack, I'm like, angels, get up. Minister Art. 583-3287. Minister Art, what's up? We need to pray. Brother James, we need to pray. We need to come together because this thing is powerful. But I know if we come together with God, all things are possible. I want a winning team. My question is, you got Jesus in this corner. Heavyweight fight. Then you got the devil over here. The destroyer of life. Jesus say, you can check my record. I'm a hundred zillion trillion and oh. And the devil done lost many fights, and his main fight that he lost was with Jesus. So my point is, who are you cheering for in the fight? If you're cheering for Jesus, stop acting like the devil. Jesus, come on, Jesus. Get him, Jesus. you like, get him, Jesus, and kicking your brother. Get over there. Come on now. Come on now. God is real. God is real. Remember. Hebrews 11, 4, 7 states, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift, and through it, he being dead still speaks. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. Praise God. Before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So all these brothers that please God had faith. Him, uh, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God mm, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Verse 7 states, by faith, Noah being divinely warned, divinely warned of things not yet 
seen, seen, moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteous, which is according to faith. Christians, try to wrap your mind around this. Try to imagine the confidence in God's faith that goes the distance that Noah had to have to remain obedient and obey God and build a boat when there was no water <laughs> at that time. Praise God. Yeah. Around. God gave Noah specific instructions for building the ark. Because of Noah's confidence in God's faith, Noah and his family would survive the coming flood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you know the story, we're here because of Noah. God destroyed everything but Noah. And I'm so thankful that when Noah landed the ark, it landed on Mount Eric. <laughs> Glory to God. So we get ready to end this thing up, but like I said, there's some things that need to be said. And, uh, and there's a... Uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that we need to discuss, but this we ain't going to cover them all. But you remember the title, Confidence and Faith That Goes the Distance. The confidence and faith in God that goes the distance. Remember, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Every Christian should be like a worker who is not ashamed of his, his or her work for the kingdom of God. Like Noah. Remember at that time it didn't rain. Remember, check this out. Do you know how long it took Noah to build the ark? I know you do, Pastor. <laughs> it, 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 over 100 years. Just imagine how obedient this guy had to be telling his sons. And just imagine, we got kids that don't listen today. Noah, every day, like, come on, kids. we like, we've been doing this for 99 years. Come on, God said, build the ark. Come on out here. We're all going to the ark. He's like, oh, man. And Noah not was just building the ark, but Noah was also prophesying and ministering to the people in this community. Yo, fellas, it's going to rain. And they like that crazy guy. People that came to visit people, went back home and came back and Noah's still up there building the ark. They're like, he sure is crazy. Crazy like a fox. He listened to everything that God said, and he's the only reason that we're here. Praise God. And he saved his family. That's what I said. If you are listening and God tells you what to do, and I don't need nobody to come up to me and say, hey, God told me to tell you this. No, that's okay. Thank you. I appreciate that, but God bless you. You know, God talks to me too. You know, so I don't need you to tell me what God told you. You can pray for me, you know, and then God will take it and throw it my way if it's for me. But don't tell me that God told me to do this and you want me to go do it. You do what God told you to do. Glory to God. The Bible. The Bible is the word of God. It's inspired by God. The Bible is the absolute authority over our lives. You have to believe that. It is the word of God. All scripture, there's a, uh, there's a Greek word that tells us, and I'm going to try to pronounce this. Uh, it's theophanes. T-H-E-O-P-N-E-U-S-T-O-S. T-O-S. Theophanistos. That's close. All scripture, but this is the Greek word. What the Greek word means is literally meaning God breathed. The Bible is telling us God has breathed every word, every scripture, every, everything that's in the Bible has been breathed on by God, inspired by God. They have many authors, 66 books, but it's all inspired by God. If you don't believe that, why are you calling yourself a Christian? God said Christians should believe this. This is my unadulterated word of God. If you say you're a Christian, you need to be walking with the word of God. And we already went through Bible and what it meant. We know it's the basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible was not a product of, the, excuse me, the Bible was not a product of human effort or intellect. But God himself breathed every word of it into existence. We need to be uh, proud of that. And recognize Christians which have, which have confidence in faith that goes the distance, believe and understand this truth. The Bible is errant, meaning perfect. The Bible is, number two, infallible, meaning unfailing. 
errant means that in the original manuscript, there was no need for correction. The word of God was perfect. 